wheat and canola crops in southern Australia's high rainfall zone should be yielding an average 50% more, and a GRDC investment is working to close that yield gap. We know through modelling that we have very high yield potential in this area, but we don't have a history of research, of breeding, of ideal crop types and management practices suited to those crop types to optimise those yields and actually achieve that potential. Agriculture Victoria's Hamilton Research Centre is in the high rainfall zone, and it's from here that Penny Rifkin leads the research effort to reduce the yield gap between today's reality and tomorrow's potential. So there's three main components of this project. We're focusing on ideal wheat types that are better suited to this region, so ideal phenology and canopy architecture. For canola, we're again looking at ideal canola types that are suited to this area with phenology and canopy architecture. And then the third component is looking at how with optimum crop types, we can actually achieve that through better management, in particular optimum nutrition. The nutrition component of the trial involves different crops or varieties each season. The research focusing on the interactions between a variety, in this case Trojan wheat, and nitrogen and phosphorus. So it could be that in putting more nutrients on will give you um, a 30% yield increase or in some cases it could even give you an 80% yield increase, but it may not be economical to do so. Research data from numerous field experiments across multiple sites is providing a better understanding of the responses to nutrients. The idea is that farmers may not be necessarily getting their response to nitrogen that they're expecting and it could possibly be through a lack of nutrition either from phosphorus, um, which is the case in this trial we're looking at, but also other nutrients such as uh, potassium and sulphur as well. The trial site includes a long-term phosphate experiment originally set up in 1978 and consists of seven different rates of phosphorus and two of nitrogen. We're seeing very strong responses to phosphorus, uh, not quite as strong as we saw last year with canola, but um, there are at least two to three times the yields uh, with sufficient phosphorus. Now the economic optimum will be somewhere in between that. We're not suggesting we put on 100 kilos per hectare of phosphorus on commercial country, but in this case it's a very good research technique to define what the maximum is, what the potential is with all nutrients. The nearby canola trial is looking to identify genetic traits that respond and adapt well to a high rainfall environment while giving reliable, consistent yields. So we're looking at the right phenology, uh, longer season canola types which can make better use of the uh, longer growing season and yet not suffer the risks around um, frost and um, or heat and uh, also a better canopy architecture, a better partitioning of all the resources that we're able to capture in the high rainfall zone and make sure that that actually goes into yield and into the economic component of the crop. While nitrogen decisions can be made in crop, a key finding from the trials is that decisions relating to the application of phosphorus, potassium and sulphur must be made before the crop is sown. The crop response will be limited by the nutrient which is most limited. In order to get good crop establishment, to get good growth, particularly in the high rainfall zone where you might have the need for the crops to be able to outcompete weeds or become a reasonable size before the onset of water logging. To help growers navigate these variables, three Excel-based decision support tools have been developed to determine the economic optimum sowing rate of macronutrients under various conditions. Growers can input their location, the crop type that they have, the expected water limited yield of those crops, the price of the wheat that they expect or the crop, wheat or canola that they expect, the um, price of the fertiliser and then there's also a provision to adjust that during, depending on what the seasonal conditions may look like. And from that, that will be given an, an optimum combination of the different nutrients, amount and type to give them the optimum yields. These decision-making tools are available to download via the GRDC community's website.